Similarly, for the generation of active low read or write signals associated with input output device, we can perform or operation of RD bar and WR bar lines of course, but with negated IO bar M bar line. Once you make a negation of the content of IO bar M bar line, which will be high when an IO device is being addressed, this will create a logic law upon negation. And the negated value of the content of IO bar M bar line with RD bar or WR bar will help us to generate active low IO R bar signal and IO W bar signal. Suppose the processor is performing an IO read operation, then the concern, the IO device concerned must be enabled. For that, the IO device will be given will be supplied with an active low chip enabled or IO device enabled signal. This enabled signal will be active low that will be generated by the logical or operation of RD bar line and negated IO bar M bar line. When this IO device is being addressed, address that has now sent happens to be the address of an IO device so that IO bar M bar line will have a content 1 that is negated here to make the content here say 0. When it's performing a read operation RD bar will be already low. Low or low make overall low. When it the address is meant for a memory or suppose how we will distinguish a memory read operation with an IO read operation. When it's meant for a memory, the low value will be generated here, which will create logic high here. 1 or 0 make it 1. And to enable the IO device, we require this content to be say low. So by the OR operation of negated IO bar M bar line and RD bar line directly, we will be able to produce active low IO R bar signal meant for enabling the IO device that is being accessed by the microprocessor to perform a read operation. That's an input device. Similarly, for a write operation of an output device, we will be generating first of all an active low IO W bar signal by the OR operation of negated IO bar M bar line and W R bar line. W R bar line. Yeah, W R bar line. Uh, this happens to be R D bar. Actually, this is like this. It's W R bar. This is not here. So this is about the generation of control signal for memory as well as I.O. devices. Now we'll move on to memory and I.O. device interfacing. We have already seen how a control signal meant for a memory element and an input output device is being generated. Now we will consider how this address is being sent or address is being decoded as long as an input device or a memory element is concerned. As of now, we often mentioned that the processor is capable of generating 64 kilobyte of addresses, 65,536 that make 64 kilobyte of addresses. They are having address values ranging from 0, 0, 0 to F. F, F, F. This make the overall 64 kilobyte of addresses. And this address will be sent over a set of 16 conducting channels referred to as address bus. Generally, this address will be sent to all memory locations, out of which there will be only one memory location or a unique memory location having this specific address. And that memory location alone will be accessed or will be making a response. How exactly this is being done, which is what we have to talk about as long as 
memory interfacing or IO interfacing is concerned or the act of memory or IO interfacing is concerned. In this statement that it will be the processor will be sending the mem address to all memory locations or to all IO devices and the address relocation alone will be making a response. Seems simple however that is not the actual procedure that will be going on as long as the addressing of a specific memory location is concerned. I have already told you that the memory will be generally splitted in terms of different subunits. If it's 64 kilobyte of memory elements, we will be often assembling this 64 kilobyte of memory in terms of 8 different units of 8 kilobyte each. Some among these will be ROM and in ROM itself some among these will be PROM or EPROM and the remaining will be often random access memories. Similarly IO devices they will be unique if there are 24 number of IO devices generally we will have 24 different IO devices. Each of them will be keeping their individuality. Sometimes even in terms of their physical features itself. However, that is not the case with the memories. Memories will be looking alike because all these are certain semiconductor devices. The only distinction that we make among them, uh, these memory elements happens to be whether it's a ROM or EPROM or RAM. Even that cannot be distinguished by their physical appearances. Generally, the memory for I.O. devices will be addressed with the help of some decoder unit being connected between the microprocessor and the actual memory location that is to be addressed. This is achieved at the expenditure of certain chips that are meant for decoding the addresses. Generally, the decoding circuits or decoding chips happens to be one out of n decoder or one out of n selector. This is the fundamental block diagram that will be showing the decoding of memory addresses and input output device addresses. This is a general block diagram that will be showing you the general way in which an IO device or an IO address or a memory address that can be decoded. So this actually represents the physical entity or the physical contact that make the addressing or the interfacing of a memory or an IO device with the micro microprocessor actually possible. So this is in fact the buffer between the microprocessor and the memory domain. Again, this decoder to represent the buffer or the link between the microprocessor and the various output or input devices incorporated or interfaced with the processor. So in between the processor and the memory or input output devices there actually present some kind of interfacing devices. Their basic purpose happens to be the decoding of the address being given to the memory or input output devices by the processor. That is why these are generally referred to as decoder chips or decoder circuits or decoder interfacing unit. A decoder can be a one out of n selector or that can be a comparator or that can be a bipolar programmable read only memory or that can be a programmable logical array or programmed logic array. <coughs> Generally, nowadays chips are available. No, nowadays, even long back itself, decoder circuits are available. We will here show the general aspect of the usage of a decoder, how this will be functioning as one out of n decoder. What I have actually shown here, decoder 1 and decoder 2 happens to be one out of 8 decoder. It has a chip enabled signal 
we have directly given IO bar M bar line as the chip enabled signal to decoder 1 whereas the negated IO bar M bar line as the uh, chip enabled signal for decoder 2. Both these lines are active low. This status is being indicated by the bubble here and all the output status are active low. This is also being indicated by the bubble here. Suppose the address that is now being placed happens to be a memory element then IO bar M bar line will have a content that is zero so that zero will be appearing here this decoder one will be enabled because its chip enabled signal is now logic low however logic low value will be negated here and here it will appear as logic high so that decoder 2 meant for the output device will not be enabled. So this device will be enabled. Now the most significant three bits of the address will be given to the memory chip select signal of the decoder 1. This happens to be A15, A14 and A13. A15, A14, A13 will be given here. Suppose these values are 0, 0, 0, then this indicate that the output channel Y0 happens to be selected. Only this will be going low and all the remaining will be high. So that this is the uh, address or contact given to first programmable read-only memory unit. So depending upon the status of the most significant three bits of the address bus you can select either this address domain or address zone that happens to be an 8 kilobyte address zone because you have interfaced eight different units or you are able to interface eight different units with this decoder as such, as long as 8085 processor is concerned, you have 64 kilobyte of memory locations. These are then equally divided as 8 different units of 8 kilobyte each. First two units in this category happens to be programmable read-only memories, as long as this illustration is concerned. And the first prom can be selected depending upon the status 000 on the most significant three bits of the address. And as is these three different bits can show status from 000 to 111. Overall, that make 0 to 7, 8 number or 8 in number. Depending upon this unit content present in this chip memory select signals, one out of the 8 different outputs of this device can be enabled. So that address domain of the first prom may be selected or second prom may be selected or first RAM may be selected or fourth RAM may be selected and if you have some RAMs that are not at being placed, you have reserved lines unused for this purpose. When you require additional memory requirement, you will be capable of uh, placing two more RAMs or memory elements here. Similarly, this shows the address decoding link for the input output device with the microprocessor. Here also there is an enabled signal that we achieve with the help of negated IO bar M bar line. IO bar M bar line will be going high when the address is meant for an input output device. So a negated value will enable this chip. Again these two has IO device select signals often that will be given or supplied with the most significant three bits of the address bus depending upon the status of this address bus that can have value from 0, 0, 0 to 111 1, 1, that is 0 to 7 8 in number one out of the eight different output or input device can be enabled this is more vivid you have input device 1 connected to Y0, input device 2 connected to Y1, output device 1 connected to Y2, output device 
2 connected to by 3 if 